All right, this is Jeff Scott. It's May 7th. It is about 325. This is the time the market's been rolling over in the last couple of afternoons, still finishing positive, but giving up much of its gains. We'll see if that happens. What I wanted to do today was to um, do a quick review before the close using HGSI and then demonstrate for you Dr. K's new trade station tools. I, I've been using his tools in TOS. I'm using them in trade station and you know, compared to there's pros and cons of all the other seasonality programs. The fact that I can paint the seasonality on the charts included in the scanner for trade station, I just find incredibly powerful. So let's go ahead and I want to do an update first, intraday update. So it's enabled. I should be set at think or swim. I am. Um, when I do the update, I want to click on update and include the intraday data. Don't need to update my Metastock files right now, so that'll save a few seconds. Let's check the time, 3.26 p.m. Let's run the update. So first thing it'll do is it'll transfer in the data, apply it to the database. This is actually last night or th this morning's data piece, I suspect, because the intraday data piece looks a little bit different. But grass doesn't grow when you watch it, so I'm going to... Yeah, now it's pulling in, it'll pull in today's data. All right, now I'm going to go into my PowerPoint, start that presentation, just, just a couple of slides, and then um, I'll see if the update's done. And um, again, we started it you know, 30 seconds ago, and then we'll do our review. Um, my email address, if you have any questions, is hgsidoc at gmail.com. Disclaimer, this is for education purposes only. Anything I recommend is in the spirit of education, not investment advice. I'm a doctor, not a broker. I'm independent. I pay for all the tools that I use. Yes, I've been promoting a couple of the products that I use every day that I have paid for. In fact, I paid a lot more for his think or swim stuff than you are because I didn't get the deal that I got for you. Um, I don't make a penny when you buy something from John Person, from, from HGSI, from any of these people. I'm just trying to... A, help some friends, but B, help you because instead of taking a fee for, as being an affiliate marketer, I just have them give it as part of the discount. And trading involves risk and union loan are solely responsible for any investment decisions you make. Um, I call my style of trading, be your own guru, and I've married what I think is the best part of, of, of CanSlim, certainly enhanced by the likes of Morales, Catcher, Minervini, uh, and Ian Woodward may rest in peace. And then how do you actually trade when you have a list of stocks? And I think that John Person is really good when it comes to actually how do you trade and the science behind it from which instrument, what signals, when to buy, how much to buy, where to put your stops. He's got some great books and some great tools. I talked about Sager's tools last week or actually two days ago, and he's got some really novel tools that will enable me to find um, stocks at particular points in their cycles. Now, from an HGSI perspective, if you don't know what it is, it's a simple software tool. It is extremely powerful. It is not the world's most intuitive. And if you are new users, old users, and you want some um, of the tools that I put together, not tools, but videos of how to use it, just email me. Free 60-day trial, um, no credit card required, excuse me, 30-day trial. Investing strategies will be hundreds of movies. Now, you need to have HGSI to use John Person's add-on, but John has included some of his indicators. I've built smart groups, warehouse views, and charts, and I think it's an incredibly powerful tool, and I'll show you how I use it as we go into the end of the day. Um, I did mention um, earlier this week about Sager's deal. It's now extended through May 15th. Um, I don't understand the business side, on, Q, on, on, on Sager's company, not my business, but all I could tell you is, what a deal. You have to have a data package from Metastock to drive this. They have end of day package and they have a real time package. If you buy the end of day package for one year and you have to be a new user and you have to buy it on Sager's site, you will get free his Vital Edge and Index product. If you decide to buy the real time product on his site as a new user. In addition to those, you'll get Q Global and Q Finder. You'll basically have all the tools that I would use on his uh, platform, although I like it on TradeStation. 
just because I'm much more comfortable on TradeStation. Dr. K spoke a couple of weeks ago, and I think I'll do a, a webinar with him in the next week or two again. And this was the package that he offered on um, Thinkorswim for his seasonality tools. And I think the thing to point out is, let's say you buy the, the center one, you're getting a couple of indicators outside of seasonality, but you're getting the watch list scan and the seasonal indicator um, tool itself. This is a one-time charge. If you look at the predominant products on the market, they are an ongoing monthly fee. This is one and done fed by TradeStation data. Yes, I have those as well because each product has its own value proposition, but I really like the fact that um, these are, and I'll show you painted on the chart. And I also want to point out his mentoring offer as well. Um, he sent me links for TradeStation today um, for the prices and I, the links aren't opening, so I'll get those. But reach out to me, hgsidoc at gmail.com, if you have any questions about that. Stock patterns are cyclical. Um, on the Sagar video, I actually tried to um, be an artist, which I'm bad at, and show where his bounce, his breakout signals, his go with flow, things that are novel names. And I just looked and I saw red on my uh, e signal, so we're getting that sell off, but my stocks are high. For my, Count is higher, go figure. Um, I think there's some really great tools, but I always spend a lot of time wondering where we are. You know, I hate to be a broken record, but I really feel like we're going to break down at this point. I am concerned about it. Um, I have been wrong. I've been, fortunately, my account is, is predominantly long, and I've taken out insurance, which means like healthcare insurance and disability. You hope you never use it, and I haven't used it. So that's hurt my account performance a little bit. I am still very positive on the year. Um, I, I do feel that happened, and what did I do? And I may take them off tomorrow morning, but with unemployment, monthly unemployment numbers tomorrow, I bought today TZA, I bought SPXU, I bought FAZ, I had some SQQQ. So I picked up some contra ETFs because I am expecting market to roll over, but I'm still predominantly long. And so you add that some puts I have on my major positions and I'm probably well positioned if this market rolls over from here. But it, if the market goes up, then I'm going to be paying a tax on this and my return will not be as high. And I had a big blow up this morning, AYX, Alteryx. I have a big position there. And it was behaving so well, but it just shows you what happens with um, earnings. And this time, earnings are a lot harder to predict. So let's see where we are in the update here. It's been only six minutes, so I don't think we'll be done, but let's see. Let me save this here. Um, all right, it is, we've got a few minutes to go, so I'm going to pause it at 3.33, and I'll restart as soon as the update's done. Okay, so I am back. It is 3.35, so that was about eight minutes to do a complete update. And keep in mind, I got Toss, Think or Swim, and Outlook running, so that eats up some of my horsepower. So um, the beauty of HGSI is that I can do top-down or bottoms-up analysis. It doesn't matter if I'm a growth or I'm a value, if I trade stocks or I trade ETFs, if I'm long or I'm short. The tool works for all of those circumstances and the market is holding. Um, if I wanna do a top-down analysis, I'm gonna pull up a list of market indices or their ETFs. And it's under market analysis user groups and major markets plus, I'm gonna hit the warehouse view. And what'll happen here is, since I've got a filter on nothing, let me turn off that filter and hit warehouse view again. What has happened is I should have 27 things open up, and these are some of the major market indexes. And I'm going to go to what's called a top-down view, and the top-down view looks at price and volume, puts most of the weight on today, a little weight on five days, and then just a teeny-weeny bit of weight on, on three weeks. And if I look and I sort by this thing called combo rank, and I want the best to come to the top, the leading group 
are gold miners. Well, that might be partly why I'm making money today because I've got a pretty big position in American Barrick Gold, which I talked about this weekend on one of my uh, presentations. I think I've rolled my options already this week. Um, the NASDAQ up at the top. Well, that's another reason why I'm making money. The 50, which is the IBD Innovator Fund. Well, that's a lot like a growth stock portfolio. That's another reason why I'm making money. And what's doing poorly today? Volatility, oil, treasuries, and big stocks. All right. Well, I'm a small cap growth guy, so that's why I'm having a positive day. So I'm going to take a very quick look at the markets and see if I have any comments about how they're doing. And if I did this correctly, they should be through 3.30ish today. So let's take a look at the S&P 500. And then let me open up a second window. I like to have a daily chart on the left. And I'm going to go into my charts that I like, not that I do for other people. Um, and that's this chart here. And I'm going to change this weekly chart to the chart that I like to use. And I'm going to put that on there. So daily chart on the left, weekly chart on the right. The red is the 200-day simple. The blue is the 50. The, the purple or magenta is the 8-day exponential. The green is the 17. And we're sort of in sideways. I won't call it hell because we're not going down. But we are clearly in a, in actually, I'll talk about these yellow lines in a second. We are clearly in a, 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 a short-term sideways move, which has got to be bullish if you think about the fact that how volatile the market has been. The weekly and daily bongo have gone green. There's no recent Hindenburg. We're actually in a squeeze. So if I was to put Bollinger Bands on those, uh, I think I, you know, I'm not going to add them now. You would probably see that they're starting to come together. Why do I know that? Because of this yellow mustard. Um, a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, I looked at Three week ago candle and two week ago candle. It's a boy, we're going to be range bound between this, the top of this candle and the bottom of this when I had a hammer and a shooting star back to back. And maybe we should just stay put till we break out one way or the other. And I think that issue is still a question because we're going sideways. If I look at this, do I, am I bullish, bearish, or neutral? I'm neutral. I think there is concern here that um, at least as far as, in my opinion, that this 200-day um, moving average looms overhead, and that is probably resistance. Your 50-day right here is probably support. And then until proven otherwise, you know, we may just be living in this box, which I think will reflect pretty much the high and low from over here. So what is the as I like to do on the weekend, the three road scenario. Well, road number one is we just break out and yellow really sucks for that, doesn't it? One is we just break out. Two is we break down. And the other road is that we just bounce around in here for a while longer, which gosh, that would actually be healthy. And then at that point, perhaps we break down or we break out. And by the way, we don't go up in a straight line. When I draw this, what I'm really drawing is this, but I'm saving time and, real, and, and trying just to make it a single line. So I'm living with that belief um, because this is not a zero risk phenomenon. I have, like I started with, picked up some contra ETFs to go into tomorrow morning, just based upon the last two Fridays and because I felt that was a little bit too long. So I am neutral, but I recognize the market can go whatever way the market wants. If I look very quickly at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, I'm going to go very quickly because the picture is very similar and you have the same type of weekly bars over there. If I look at the NASDAQ Composite, different picture because I know already it's actually above the moving averages. Boy. This one has, resi has, has, has resistance free zone above. Um, you're getting far enough that I'm starting to be less worried by the overhead. And it's above its moving averages. You got the 8 above the 17, the 50 is below the 200.
but you've got lots of support underneath. I feel much more bullish about the NASDAQ here. And then the Russell, which is, you know, last week, the beginning of the week, really was powerful. You can see the big move up here. It's now kind of going sideways, and it's lower in the pattern than the rest. So best I would say about this market is it's surprisingly resilient, and I would have bet it would have rolled over, and it hasn't. So if you look at my account, you'll see lots of longs, some with puts on them, and then you'll see a lot of, uh, what's the word I would use, contra ETFs that I've already mentioned today. Now, the dollar is not my friend because when the dollar goes up, it usually is not the best for my portfolio. And um, the dollar, I've been calling it sideways for a while. I still think it's sideways. It's sideways, you know, look at the range here. We're not talking big difference here. You had a, a breakdown in the dollar as the market rolled over and as the market seemed to um, stabilize, you saw the dollar shoot higher. Um, but now we're right back where we started, which is a sideways move for quite some time. Volatility, this one has me a little bit perplexed. I think it plays into my bear concerns is that it's clearly coming down. It's been nicely coming down. But my gosh, it's still significantly elevated above its resting phase. So there's still some volatility in this market. But I've got to agree that it's... Um, it's, it's definitely come down. Um, failed here at the 50 and dropped down further based upon this, which, I, which David Elliott taught me was called an ice hole failure. I might expect it to come down to the 200 before it bounces. If I look at the metals, I already showed you the metals are strong. Here's gold, weak dollar sideways. Gold is having a nice day here. Um, Still a little bit below its recent highs, but gold has been strong. Now, I've seen so many people calling for a super move in gold that maybe it won't happen. But gold clearly is strong. Um, silver has been weaker than gold, but it too has been moving of late. As you can see, it's off its lows. Had a, this is a person buy signal coming in today. A mobile breakup from a squeeze, a pocket pivot, and a kahuna. That's a very bullish pattern for silver. And then if I want to look at gold miners, which is where I have a couple of plays, gold miners on a great run. And maybe this is a, a new bull run for gold miners. Um, is it too late to get them? you got to look at the individual stocks. If you believe that gold is going on a, a big run here, then, um, then it's not too late. I'd rather wait for them to pull back to buy more. If I jump in TradeStation for a second, um, let's just look at, say, the S&P 500 in, hold on, did I not bring that in? Uh, hold on. Workspaces, open workspace. To answer some of the questions that you're saying to yourself, yes, I have a lot of tools and indicators. Actually, I do know how to use some of them. Some of them I probably don't use the way they're supposed to be used, but if they work for me, what do I care? Um, and I have been doing this for a long time. And the thing about indicators, they sort of accumulate over time. So a lot of these things I've been using for five, seven years, and I probably buy 20% new material <clears throat> each year and of that 20% new material, maybe one or two th things will actually stick. Um, what I wanted to look at is um, the E-minis and notice a buy signal from John Person came in today. It's on a weekly buy. It's still on a monthly sell. So now we're getting a little bit more oomph by having the daily and weekly be green. If I look at the NASDAQ, we went green yesterday. If I look at the uh, the Dow, still no buy signal yet. And if I look at the Russell, no buy signal. So we're starting to see a, maybe a green shoot appearing in the S&P 500 and in the NASDAQ. Now, if I go into this picture, and I've got 
and we make this daily. I have the E-mini, then I have the NASDAQ future, then the Dow futures, and then I have the Russell futures. And what I wanted to show you is, I've talked about it before, um, we had a big run-up in the market, and then all kinds of topping signs. And if you put your eyes down here, you're going to see a Kelly major cycle high. And then these are stretches from the Q tools. And this was a person sell signal. This was a go with flow signal to the short side. I had signal after signal telling me the market was going to die. The market died. What happened at the bottom? I had a, a Roy Kelly major cycle low. Stretches, person buy. And now we had a big run up. Um, we slowed down into the this trend line here, which was resistance. And now we're sitting in a um, wedge. Will we, it's not necessarily a falling wedge, which is a good thing because that is a bearish, excuse me, it's, let me say it again. It is more of a sideways wedge. Um, and not necessarily a rising wedge in a bear market. So this could turn out to be, I think this is a neutral looking wedge. Um, you know, when you have a market that's falling, this to prove it otherwise could have been a bearish wedge uh, and then it, it, with a breakdown, but it was the beginning of a new run perhaps. But we've run up to resistance. We've got my Roy Kelly signal here. So that has to tell you that this market is in risk. The exact same analysis could be done here on the NASDAQ. I had a, a, a Q stretch, a Q headwind. I had a John Person sell, and I had a Roy Kelly major cycle high. They dropped down. At the bottom, I ran into trend line support from Cigar. I had a Person buy signal, and I had a Roy Kelly major cycle low. Where are we at today? Um, surprisingly, I thought this was the end and it was going to roll over. The market bounced off of support here, but we've got a major cycle high and we're sitting up against resistance. Now, I could go through all of these. This is a very common picture, um, and that's got me a little bit concerned over the very short term. Um, just looking at the markets right now. In Thinkorswim, we can see that they've come off their highs quite a bit. And it looks like, let's see, I don't know how long it's going to take to open up. Well, it's not off their highs that much, but you've got little tails on the top. So they pull back a little bit. They're still strong on the day. Um, and I believe I'm still making money. See, last time I looked, I was in the 40s, so I've come down a little bit, but we'll see if we get another bounce before the day is done. We have 10 minutes left. Now, the second part of top-down analysis, and typically I want to do this so I can make some last-minute trades, is to look at industry groups. I've got 176. How many of them are to the upside today? 95. Short-term momentum, how many to the downside? Three, large pharma, generic pharma advertising. Okay. Over a five-day window, a longer-term window to the upside, I've got 71. And to the downside, I have 40. So a little bit mixed on the intermediate time frame, but definitely um, on the short-term time frame favoring the bulls. Now, what I'll typically do is I will look at the top industry groups. Uh, this one is an industry of industry doesn't count. So application software is my number one. Change to group. And there we have Twilio, which had a huge Bible gap up today. There's a Bible gap up. And a Kahuna. If you own it, God bless you. I probably put my stop somewhere in the middle of this candle. I'm not sure I'd be chasing it here. That is a pretty monster move today. Next one I have is Zoom Video. A much more attractive buy point as it pulled back into its moving averages, a mobile breakout from a squeeze. But it too has had a pretty big run. It's certainly a COVID work at home stock. Slack Technologies, another COVID work at home stock. A kahuna out of a squeeze. 
You know, is this, it's an IPO. It's really its first right-hand side of the, the cup. Um, probably too early for me, although this might be in the early phases of forming a cup and a handle. Activision Blizzard, this has been another COVID stock. You know, maybe it's going to give us a little bit of a pennant here. I might be watching this over the next couple of days. Um, is this actionable today? No. Um, and here you have live person running into the 200. So I'm going to look through the top stocks in a couple of different groups, precious metals. Um, Newmont Mining is the first one that pops up. And it's, you know, it's starting to give you a little bit of a base on the daily. Mobile breakout for squeeze, Kahuna. Um, look at the fundamentals. Good earnings per share growth. Um, if I, I, I'm nothing against thinking about going long Newmont here. Yes, it's extended, but it's giving you a little bit of a sideways move. You may not get more. Royal Gold um, broke out today. Um, the next is the index, but below that is my American Barracks. And you could see it's giving you, like um, Newmont, perhaps an opportunity to get in after a couple days of a sideways move. The next thing I would look at is infrastructure software and Fastly. Uh, earnings play today, buyable gap up. Now, I, I look at this as not making money. This is a powerful move. It's an IPO. It's pretty much taken out its, pre its, its IPO highs. There are strategies around that. Um, it's had a big move, and I'd rather find lower risk trades, but that one probably goes higher. Fortinet is an antiviral play and security play. And they must be hot today because one of mine, CrowdStrike, is doing well today as well. Nice breakout. It doesn't count as a Bible gap up probably because of the volume of 2 million versus, yeah, this doesn't have 150% of the average volume. Microsoft Corp, I have a position there. Kind of a boring, meandering hire. Had great earnings, hasn't really done much since earnings. ServiceNow also had great earnings and a breakout. Sometimes you have to go high to go higher and buy stocks that are starting to get extended. And since PANW, has this one recovered? It's, it's trying to come back. It's at the 200-day moving average, a weekly high close doji. Um, the one I'm in of this group is CrowdStrike, and you could see not that sexy, no big moves or anything except down here and here. They had a couple of gaps, but a nice steady running also in the IPO world. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them right now because of time. A bottoms up analysis is different. So in the bottoms up analysis, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, go down here and I'm going to see if I have an, a um, group that reflects the stocks I like to buy. And the answer is yes. How about, well, before I say yes, let's make sure it's in this one. Prospecting, 500,000 shares, $50 stocks, and they're optionable. Now they're going to open up here. So I like buying stocks in an uptrend that pull back to the 50-day moving average and then have momentum come in. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to pullbacks in an uptrend. I'm going to look at uptrend near free parking, which is the 50-day moving average. And I'm going to find the one um, that has, oh, where's the one that has, I didn't do it in this one. All right. So I have 1,624 stocks that are above their, 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 their 200-day moving average and are close to free parking. So that's interesting. That means that this is 2% away from the 50-day moving average and I don't believe that this is right. So let me look at my view and I change these things around a lot. Ah, the view's not attached. Okay. So let me just pause it for a second while I find the view. All right. So what I did is I made sure I had the right view attached and I added a little trick to it. I said, I want the 50 day moving average to be positive slope. So are any of these stocks going to meet my criteria? Stock and uptrend pull back to the 50 and a move up. I'm just missing a momentum signal, but maybe tomorrow I may get that signal. So that that's nice. Um, Alpha Tech Pro. Nope. Not much going on. Nope. 
Not a big, look at the bonds. So I'm not going to buy this because it's bonds that are extended. Sideways move. It's within 2% of the 50-day moving average. It's in a squeeze, and it just had a kahuna. That's the signal that I want to find to, to buy something. I just prefer it not to be a bond fund. All right, so I made it too tight. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to um, loosen it and add a squeeze and a mobile breakout. Here's a free parking with the squeeze. Let's look at a couple of these. Epizyme. It's in, in a squeeze. It had a MOBO breakout yesterday. It had a person buy signal today. You know, yes, it's sort of in a little bit of a flag here. Um, I'd wait for it to break out above the PSAR dots. I know the company well. Tal edu Education Group is within 2% of the 50. It's sitting on the 50 in a squeeze. This would be on my list looking for it to move higher. FGL Holdings, I don't see the momentum signal. Alpha Pro Tech, we saw that before. So that's one of the scans that I like. Another scan that I like to do is go into uptrend near the 20-day SMA. And these are the ones that are in a squeeze. There's 65. And now let's just see if any of them have some momentum indicators attached to them. So far, nope. None of them met my criteria with the, the momentum indicators. Then I might go down to John Person's signals, and I would see that on my list of prospecting, John Person bulls, because it's a bullish day, and it's moved up a little bit. Um, I have 1,541 bulls. I can't look at that, but just to give you an idea, the one that came to the top, here is Workaday. And what does this chart look like? So it's a big move off the bottom, a kahuna today, a new John Person buy signal with a new daily weekly bongo. This is an interesting stock. But let's see if I can narrow this down a little bit. So that's all daily. Here's the, so we have 88 have a new buy today. We have one with a buy near support. This one's kind of going sideways. I don't know if this is a takeout. If it wasn't a takeout candidate, it looks interesting. I believe it's a takeout candidate. Daily buy with a weekly buy. Got 70 of them. Workaday is in a weekly buy. I already showed you. The, oh, this is Acacia. So just look at a couple of these to see if we got anything that looks interesting. As I said, Workaday was interesting. New Relic. Um, you know, I'd rather be above the 200, but I've got a Kahuna. I had a pocket pivot yesterday. Uh, my PMC is bullish. Mobile breakout from a squeeze yesterday, about to take out downtrending moving averages on the weekly. This looks interesting, new relic. Dropbox, I think they got earnings today, so I wouldn't touch them unless, but look at this, maybe I should have. Pocket pivot, mobile breakout, and a um, kahuna today, and a new person buy signal. So the whole point of prospecting is to quickly find stocks that meet your criteria. Perhaps the best of my scans, which is a John scan, is this Trilogy scan, which has a lot of stocks that I rec rec recognize as being very good stocks right now. The Workaday New Relic, Dropbox, my proof point. Let's look at just Dropbox. I mean, this is a stock I like. It's in an uptrend, a little bit of a sideways move pullback. Two kahunas in the last three days, a breakout today, MOBO breakout. That's what I want to see. So what do I do? I run my scans. I run HGSI around 320. At 330, I start this analysis. It clearly takes a lot longer for me to um, do this for you because I have to talk. But once I ran my run my scans, I am ready. And the next step is to find a couple stocks, put them on my watch list, put them in my radar screens, and perhaps be ready tomorrow to do some purchasing. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Just to remind you, um, Sagar's offer is through May 15th. And um, what else do what I want to tell you? I'll, Dr. K, email me. I'll have his links, HGSI doc at gmail.com and I'm still, as you can see, aggressively using the John Person package. 
Goodbye, everybody, and thank you for being here.